Hi, in this video you will learn how to debug .NET code called from Java with JavaNet. For the purpose of this example, let's create a trivial .NET class representing a person and tidy. Here I have an empty class library project where I will create our new class. Now let's add first name and last name properties. To complete our class we need a method to calculate valid display name. Alright, seems we've got our person and tidy ready. Now we need only a few lines of Java code to interoperate with our .NET class. Similarly, as in Visual Studio, I've got a Java project opened in my Eclipse that we'll use for this example. Let's start writing. Our first line activates JavaNet framework using provided credentials and JavaNet framework argument. Successful execution of this step Load CLR within Java process allowing our .NET debugger to be attached. Second line instructs JavaNet to load classes referenced in the DLL library file under a given path into the CLR. This makes our person class accessible. Now we need to instantiate a new person object and set its properties to relevant values. This piece of code invokes person object's display name method and stores its return value in local string variable. To see results of java.net interoperation, let's print the display name value to standard output of Java process. Ok, our code is ready. Let's run it and go step by step through the debugging procedure. It's important to activate JavaNet before attempting to place any breakpoint on Java side of our solution, as this will start CLR within our process. Let's put a breakpoint right after the activate method and run the solution in debug mode. Now let's switch to our Visual Studio and attach a debugger to the newly started Java process with CLR. In order to do that, go to debug, attach to process and select appropriate Java process. Notice that its type value should indicate that it's hosting managed code using .NET version matching the one we've specified in JavaNet activate method using JavaNet framework argument. Let's put a breakpoint in the body of the person's class display name method. Notice that the breakpoint circle symbol is hollow inside since the debugging symbols have not been loaded into CLR yet. On Java side, let's move one step forward. Calling add reference method loads our DLL library which should result in person class becoming available for debugging in Visual Studio. As you can see the circle symbol is now completely filled. At this stage our breakpoint is active and will get hit once the display name method is invoked on Java side. In Eclipse, let's proceed with code execution until person object is completely instantiated, so we would be able to call its display name method. Passing this point will result in hitting breakpoint in Visual Studio. As you can see, we can now use .NET Debugger for all our intended activities like variables inspection, runtime values modification, etc. Once our work with debugging person class is done and normal code execution is resumed, it will be transferred back to Java. As the program finishes, we'll get a return display name value of our person object instance. Presented debugging method is available also in situations when we do not have access to library source code, provided that the related debugging symbols PDB file is available on the JavaNet class path at runtime and we know full namespace, class name and target method where to put a breakpoint, we can still touch debugger. Rerun Java code from Eclipse breaking its execution right after the activate method to launch a new Java CLR enabled process. In Visual Studio close the solution from our previous example. The same way as before attach debugger to respective managed Java process. 
Our next step would be to insert new breakpoint. As we do not have the source code available, we'll need to specify its location manually. In order to do that, go to the breakpoint window and click New Break It Function. This should result in opening new window where we're asked to put the location of our breakpoint by specifying fully qualified method name. Once we are happy with our input, Visual Studio might notify us about not being able to find the specified location, which is understandable due to lack of source code. After accepting this notification, we should be presented with a breakpoint entry. The circle will be hollow again since we've not loaded our .NET library via JavaNet API yet. If we proceed one step with Java code execution, the breakpoint symbol will again get filled, similarly to how it behaved in previous example. At this point, we are ready to debug our .NET application. Therefore, let's proceed with Java code execution. Invoking display name method will hit our specified breakpoint, returning control to the Visual Studio, where we'll be presented with a source code generated based on the supplied debugging symbols file. Now we can use .NET debugger in the same way we did previously. Today we have learned how to debug .NET code executed from Java with JavaNet, in both cases when we have the full .NET source code available or just a compiled DLL with debugging symbols. Thank you for watching this video. For more information check developer's guide on our website. Don't forget to subscribe our YouTube channel and follow us on LinkedIn, Twitter or Facebook to get notified about latest news and next training videos. Have a great day of Java development!